Good morning. Oh, come on. Good morning. All right, good. Good to have everybody here. Hello, Louise. Hello, Julie. So my name is Clay Marsh, and I'm the um, Vice President for Health Sciences and, and Executive Dean, and I'm also the Dean of Medicine, which is a lot of blah, blah, blah. But what I really wanted to do this morning was, one, to welcome all of you guys to the WVU family, and, and I believe that most people here are health science people. Is that right? But maybe not everybody. Is that what I understand? So, so what I hope to do is spend about 10, 15 minutes talking to you guys. It's like two people, so I'll, I'll stay back here. Talking to you guys about um, what we hope to accomplish and what we stand for. And then I really want to find out who you are. So we're going to take a mic and we're going to pass it around and we're going to have you guys introduce yourselves and, and what group you're with and what you're set out to do and what your goals are. So, so this to me will be a little bit more of an interactive session, even though it's in a room that maybe doesn't lend itself so well to interactiveness. So I came, I'm, I'm a West Virginia native and I grew up in Charleston. My dad was the editor of the Charleston Gazette and Gordon Gee, it likes to point out to me that my dad was a person he respected but didn't necessarily love because my dad would always throw bombs across, grenades across the wall at Gordon. And the Daily Athenaeum, which is our student newspaper, at one point published an article and called my dad a loose cannon, which he had framed over his desk for the entirety of his career at the Charleston Gazette. So he's proud of that. Um, and so I come from a family of people that stand for a cause. The internal motto at the Gazette was sustained outrage for social injustice. And so I graduated undergraduate medical school here at WVU. I went to Ohio State University and I was there for 30 years, that's three zero. Uh, and when Gordon came back, Gordon Gee came back as the president of WVU, he pulled me back to oversee the health side of the university. And it's been an amazing journey back again. Well, when I came back and I interviewed, I had a couple of frames that I thought would either get me another interview or would get me, have me finish with the interview process. Because I said, I think what we do in healthcare and I think what we do at universities is really quite backwards. You know, when we look at research, we serve ourselves. We may serve the mentees that we have, but we, op we oftentimes don't solve real problems. You know, we're doing things to promote our own careers. When we look at education, we're teaching people to take a test, you know, filling their minds up with stuff you could look up on your phone, as opposed to expanding horizons. And on the clinical side, we benefit from people being sick. We don't really work to help people be well because it's not our quote unquote business model. So the transactional nature of what we've done lists and rankings and bills and press Ganey scores and US News and World Report. You know, it's funny when we do well on a ranking, we're like hyping it, oh, it's great. You know, we're number this, number that. We're in the best group of this. But when we do badly on those same rankings, we're like, oh, methodology, oh, it's, you know, they've changed things. We suffer because these reputa high reputational places get all the, the love. But the fundamental truth is that both when we do well and when we don't do well is the same issue. And that issue is that we are oftentimes looking for external validation on what we do. And really the goal should be to allow the people here to not only work at the top of their licensure, but to have fun, to thrive. You know, it's interesting that the poet, philosopher, Anna East Nen, I can't say her name very well, said one time, we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. And I think that when you come to a new place or you, you come to a place to work with other people, we each see the world a little bit differently. And that can be a, a, a point of great creativity, diversity, togetherness, the wisdom of crowds, if you're familiar with that idea, that an expert in an area single expert in an area when asked an unknown question about that area versus a diversified group who doesn't have the same level of expertise but has 
diversified expertise, the group will almost always do better in decision making than the individual, the wisdom of crowds. But oftentimes we see each other as opponents, competitors. You know, we want to fight for a better job, a better salary, you know, our children a better school, a better life, a better husband, a better wife, ah, da, 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 da. And we're just overwhelmed with stuff that we should do. Our to-do lists become very big, but we lose our ability to stay centered, to enjoy the journey that we have. You know, the odds against you being you, sitting in that chair is what? This was, this was done in the Huffington Post. What are the odds against you being alive and being yourself? Take a guess. One in how many? Okay, I'll help. So it's one to 10 to the 2,640,000th power. That's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, 2,640,000 times. So basically impossible that you'll be alive, but here we all are. So if you ever want uh, to know what a miracle looks like, look in the mirror, because that is you. And, but we don't oftentimes see that. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard the greeting namaste. Have you guys ever done that, yoga? Do you, do you know what that translates to? At least in Hindu, it translates to the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. That I see who you really are, which you and me are part of the same bigger thing. And the word health comes from the root word hal, H-A-L, which is also the root word of heal, and it's the root word of holy, and it means whole. W-H-O-L-E. So in a world where we understand today that illness is related to a feeling of not belonging, not being worthy, social loss of social capital, social isolation. Sam Quinones, who wrote a great book called Dreamland about the opioid epidemic meeting the pill mill economy, said the problem with opioid dependency is isolation. Isolated people use drugs, and drugs isolate people. So we're living in a world where we're getting more polarizing message. It's us versus them, whoever us and them is. It is that we're separate, we're alone, we're fragile, we're vulnerable. But we know that community is really what drives health in many ways. Um, Tom Friedman, editorial writer for New York Times, said, the difference in outcomes in our country are not the rich versus the poor, or the coast versus the middle, it's the strong communities versus the weak communities. Russell Honore, general, flew into Hurricane Katrina when it was absolutely a mess. FEMA was sending out boats to rescue people that were stranded in their homes, and they said, we don't have enough boats. So people only, no pets, no possessions, people only, and the boats came back empty. They came back empty. The people from FEMA said, we told you, get the people. And the boat driver said, they won't leave. They won't leave their pets. They won't leave their stuff. They won't leave. And Russell Honore, the guy that came off the helicopter, the general from the U.S. Army that Russell Nagan, the mayor of New Orleans, said was the John Wayne-looking dude that walked off the helicopter. As I remember, he said, there's one rule and only one rule. Treat people like they're in your family. You would do it for somebody in your family, do it for those people. And people came back holding their dogs and their cats and taking some of their precious belonging. But they all started to come back. And wouldn't it be great to work at a place where indeed we treated each other like we're in our own family? That's presuming you like your family, but I'll, I'll assume you do. So, so the goal here is to try to create a place where we celebrate excellence. We celebrate excellence in teaching not in scholarship, only in education. We, um, we celebrate excellence in clinical care, not in writing about new programs, but doing a great job taking care of people. We also celebrate people that are great at research, that are great at education, at scholarship. We want to create a place where our education really expands the stories people can tell each other. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Joseph Campbell, so Joseph Campbell is a mythologist. He has since died, but he taught at Sarah Lawrence College. And he wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, which if you look it up on Wikipedia has become now the hero's journey. George Lucas read Joseph Campbell's book 
and thought of Star Wars. So the hero's journey is the mythological journey that every hero takes, and it goes through a very set set of things that happen to people. And, and what's really interesting, this is handed down in many civilizations from Native American Indians to Greeks to Romans to, you know, even up to, to us, the stories that we tell, right? History, his story, could be her story too, but it is history. Um, but that is a metaphor for our journey within. It's our journey to discover ourselves. And wouldn't it be great to be at a place that welcomed you to be able to do that? Not just to perform for us like a cog in a machine, but to be seen as a valuable individual who is contributing, not because you have to, contributing because you want to. Um, Dan Pink wrote a great ball, book called Drive that said that if we paid you guys, okay, how about this? What if I agreed that I would pay you more every time you do something good? So something that we could quantifiably define as good would allow me to give you more money. Would you vote for that? Yep. So do you think if I did that, your work performance would be better, would be unaffected, or do you think it would be worse? Of course, there's a catch here, of course. But what do you think? What's that? Unaffected? Well, it turns out that from a lot of research, it turns out you would do your job worse. And the reason why you do your job worse is because eventually you'll be attracted to just do stuff to make money as opposed to do stuff, like you say, because you want to do something good. People that do assembly line work, being paid more for doing stuff, that's good. But people that do cognitive work, they work for autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So you should lay the money on the table, pay people well, fairly. And do you guys understand what relative deprivation is? Have you ever heard that term? So Malcolm Gladwell talks about that. So relative deprivation, and you guys will know this, it's when you feel really good about what you're doing until you find out somebody around you is, has it a little better. And then once you find out somebody around you has a little better, then whatever you're doing becomes very unsatisfying. It's like, oh, I'm getting screwed, I'm making less money. But I think that, that for me, the opportunity here is that we each have our perception, we each have our, our path, and we want to be able to do as well as we possibly can in our path, but there's more reimbursement than just money. The reimbursement is in time and in the opportunity to pursue the things you really like to. So we hope to pay people fairly, not equally, but fairly, but the goal would be to have you thrive and reach, the, um, reach your, your, your highest ability. And, and how do we do that? Well, we do that by constantly trying to keep in touch and find out how you're doing. You know, our goal is as leaders to be servants, not to have you serve us, but to have us serve you. And we have grown pretty extraordinarily in the last five years. We've hired easily 750 faculty members, um, about 500 in, in the medical side uh, that are physicians, and, and we continue to grow but we want to grow with the right kind of people because eventually the people who we believe in are people who also believe in this community, the connection, helping each other out. And so anything we can do for you, we are here to do so. We don't have unlimited resources, but we are not poor either. And I think that for me, when somebody says, oh, I can't do something until I get some money, I generally take that as you're not ever going to do something because if it's in you to do something, you'll do it. Money to me is something that can scale what you do and sustain what you do, but we want to give you the freedom and the flexibility to create, to fly, and to, and to feel like you're at a place that will support that. So I don't want to keep blah, blah, blah. What I'd like to do is I'd like to get our microphone and maybe just start going around and having you guys tell the rest of us um, who you are, where you're from, what you're doing, and what you'd like to accomplish when you're here. And then as things come up, we can discuss certain things that might be more relevant to you. And I'll be happy as we go around the table to take any questions too. We'll start back there. Okay, let's do it.
My name is Greg Stolaski. I'm the Director of Clinical Education for the new PA program. That's going to be starting in January. PA being physician, physician assistant, right? Awesome. And um, so one of the things I would like to accomplish in that program is just get it with a good, solid foundation and hopefully with a lot of help from you all as preceptors. And where are you coming from? And I come from Morgantown. All right. Good. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, my name's Ryan McGuire. I'm originally from Youngstown, Ohio, but I've been training in Philadelphia for the past five years. I'm one of the new pediatric ophthalmologists and adult strabismologists for the Eye Institute here, and um, just getting started. So my goal is to just see lots of patients and hit the ground running. So oh, fantastic! Great to have you here. Thank you. Sorry for the pressure. If there's any felt, I think it's good for you guys to get to know each other too. I'm Krista Fenler. I'm with Gynecologic Oncology. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, but came here from UC Irvine in Southern California. For um, the weather? Yeah, <laughs> definitely for the weather and for the narrow, windy roads that don't get plowed in the winter. Um, so, <laughs> Wow, you know a lot about us Yeah, already. I've been here since the end of September, so I've been through a winter here, and um, that's why I comment on that. But uh, one of my goals here is um, in the OBGYN department, I'm trying to get a global health track started. I do some work in Zambia, and so I'm trying to give the residents the opportunity to come and do that as well. Um, and in addition to that, here, we're trying to grow the GYN oncology division and be able to build up our clinical trials program so that we have more of the um, most current advances available to our patients here and also just be able to do outreach and um, keep the care in state instead of having people leave and go to nearby states instead. Awesome. Thank you. I'm Holly Shapiro. I'm a nurse practitioner. I work in gyne oncology with Dr. Fendler. I grew up in Glenville, West Virginia, but I've been in Morgantown for a long time. <laughs> oh, great. So you know all about the winters and the windy roads. I'm Samara. I'm from Houston. I just graduated out of my fellowship, and I'm a first-time faculty at WBU for Hemonc, uh, Adult Hematology Oncology, and I'm primarily based in Parkersburg for my clinical practice, and Academia is here. So for Parkersburg, my primary aim is to bring all the clinical trials from Morgantown to Parkersburg so that my patients could also avail them. Uh, for here, I think it's just like for my own career development. Oh, fantastic. Great to have you here. Thank you. I'm Zach Odie, uh, born and raised, reside in Charleston, West Virginia. Um, with faculty with the undergraduate program that is Health Informatics and Information Management, HIIM. Uh, we're fairly new, especially at the undergraduate level. Um, across the country, there's not very many programs like this, so that's what brought me to WU, and we're hoping to make it one of the better ones in the country, get out in front of it. That's right. I'm Michael Hu from the Department, Department of Microbiology. I came from Maryland, National Institute of Health. So um, the, one of my goal here is to uh, run bioinformatics core and to promote uh, sequencing-based uh, projects um, through support from the bioinformatics. Oh, fantastic. Great to have you here. A needed set of skills you're bringing. Awesome. I'm Megan Willard. I'm Born and raised in Maryland, I was previously a faculty at University of Maryland. I'm in gastroenterology, and um, now faculty here. And my goals would be to train the next generation of gastroenterologists, um, look for some institutional service opportunities, take care of patients, and make some great friends. Because I have no one here. I'm, all my family is three hours away. <laughs> uh, a lot of friends to be here in the room. Hi, I'm Yi Zhong Chen. Uh, I'm work for the OBGYN, and uh, I'm from San Antonio, Texas, where I got my PhD in biology over there. So I'm here to be part of my 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 appointment is a research, and also I'm an embryologist in the center of reproductive biology. So it's trying to help uh, couple who suffer from the, the infertility. So ah. just making a baby here. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Rebecca Burke, and I just completed my fellowship in neonatology and medical genetics at Baylor College of Medicine, so I'm also new faculty. Um, one of the things I'm interested in is increasing access to genetic testing um, and certainly um, hoping to establish more of a formal prenatal genetics clinic. So 
that's kind of my main interest at this point. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm Angela Goodhart. I'm originally from Northeast Ohio. I'm also a new faculty. I'm with the Department of Clinical Pharmacy with a secondary appointment to family medicine. Uh, I just completed my residency. I'm more of an outpatient focused clinician. Um, so I'm looking to just jump in after being here about two weeks to hopefully start taking care of patients and improving their quality outcomes. Excellent. I was hoping the microphone would go the other way so we'd run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Nick Castle. I'm the department chair for health policy management and leadership. Um, I have a goal for the department to increase our profile. We have some very, very good faculty, and I think we, we need a little bit more recognition. Good. And where are you from? Pittsburgh. Excellent. Uh, I'm Audra Hamrick um, from the School of Public Health, uh, the Department of Social and Behavioral Health Sciences, also the director of public health practice. Um, I've actually been with the school for almost a year, um, missed orientation by a couple weeks last year. So I'm um, originally from West Virginia, I've been in Morgantown a long time, just hoping to train the next generation of public health practitioners and improve uh, health outcomes of this great state um, and all of its people. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I am Hannah Bush. I am faculty in the School of Music, School of Music and Medicine. Um, I'm a music therapist, and my primary goals are to grow the music therapy program at Ruby and um, to conduct research looking at family support in the PICU. That's great. I thought you might sing it. Uh, hi, I'm Becky Reese. I'm an infectious disease uh, provider. Um, I'm from Mullins, West Virginia, which is down in Wyoming County. Um, did my undergrad med school and residency here and left to go to Brown to do my ID fellowship and have been on, was on faculty there for six years. Um, but had an amazing opportunity to come home and do both clinical work and then a lot of support for both educational and research activity um, with global health um, is one of my focuses, and then as well as um, addiction-related uh, infections. And so I'll be doing that throughout the state. We're so happy you're back. All right, and I'm Nevina Stefan, um, originally from Egypt. However, I've been here in West Virginia enough to say I'm West Virginia. Uh -huh. um, finished my residency and fellowship in child and adolescent psychiatry. Uh, this is my first appointment as a faculty, and my main interest is in management of children with adverse childhood effects. Uh, in addition to sorry, events, in addition to helping with the addiction, particularly in the child and adolescent population. Yeah, if you guys don't know about the adverse childhood experience survey and what she's doing, worth worth connecting. Very very interesting set of data. I'm Isabella Negrin, I'm one of the new pediatric outpatient uh, faculty um, from York, Pennsylvania initially, but did my residency here and decided to stay because I liked it so much. Um, so I guess one of my big goals is I'm going to be one of the main providers at the Waynesburg Clinic that's opening up soon. Um, so just kind of building that clinic up and building the practice. Awesome. Uh, I'm Jan Pham. I'm one of the new uh, faculty in the uh, section of hematology oncology. I originally grew up in Austin, Texas, but I went to med school and residency here. I did a fellowship in the University of Louisville and had a too good of an opportunity to come back, particularly because I missed the parking situation on game, game day weekends. Um, <laughs> you guys will figure out in the fall time soon. Um, we need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, in private, okay. Um, but my immediate goals are to do um, more phone calls to IT to get my email and Epic access working properly, but otherwise I'll be planning to see patients in the head, neck, and melanoma space with an emphasis on working with the fellowship program down the road. Let us know if you need any help in your IT quest. So my name is Jamie Lottis, um, originally from Wheeling, West Virginia, uh, did medical school in the southern part of the state, came up here and did medicine pediatrics residency, and left a couple years ago to go to South Carolina for a rheumatology fellowship. So. I'm one of the new faculty in the Department of Medicine, the section of rheumatology. Uh, we'll be working at the Suncrest Town Center Clinic. Um, initial goals are to kind of help uh, bolster that clinic, but eventually maybe do some outreach programs to the state uh, to improve access to rheumatologists because there aren't very many of us. And we are also starting a fellowship program uh, just as of July 1st, so we're hoping to kind of grow that over the coming years as well. So, Great. We need more rheumatologists. I'm Christine Brown. I will be working at the Cheat Lake Clinic in pediatrics. I just spent the past two years in Charleston, South Carolina at a clinic 
I'm affiliated with MUSC. So it's the other Charleston. Yes, Charleston, <laughs> South Carolina. Um, so my immediate goals are really just providing pediatric care for the kiddos in this area. The other Charleston with some amazing restaurants and views, by the way. Uh, my name is Saif Al-Katane. I, uh, uh, I came from Pittsburgh, uh, finished my uh, fellowship there. I am a pediatric pulmonologist. Uh, myself and my uh, co-worker, uh, Cassie, we're establishing the uh, uh, section for uh, pediatric pulmonology. Uh, it's pretty much uh, patient care and uh, um, improve the uh, clinic. Right. Whichever way, I'll be the conduit here. I'm the bridge. So I'm Cassandra Arevalo, and I am originally from Venezuela, and I train in pediatrics and pulmonary in Philadelphia. And as Safe said, we're, uh, we're recruited to develop the section of pediatric pulmonology at the New Children's Hospital and at the current. So we have a lot of programs to develop there, and uh, the idea is to hopefully be in that world a news record and... Uh, mm, just provide care for a lot of pediatric uh, kids that need pulmonary care. Yeah, awesome. Great. Good morning. Um, my name is Yum Nguyen. I come here from High Point University in North Carolina. I am the new chair of the new division of athletic training in the Department of Human Performance. Um, my goals are to first transition the athletic training program from CPAS at the bachelor's level to the master's level in the School of Medicine um, and get a faculty. Our, one of our major initiatives is to um, really get into the community and uh, develop a youth sports safety program, getting healthcare and sports medicine into the community here. Fantastic. Great to have you here. Pass the baton. Hi, my name is Madison Sternberg. I just finished my training in obstetrics and gynecology here at WVU, and I'm staying on as faculty um, for a brief stint, um, but I'm really excited to do that and just kind of looking to make that transition um, from resident to faculty. So, thanks. Great. I'm Kristen Hornsby. Um, I'm originally from Akron, Ohio. I'm also um, I was a co-resident with Madison, so I'm also OBGYN and um, staying on here um, as a generalist and hoping to just help women's health care in our state. Fabulous. Um, hi, I'm Mitari Chaudhuri. I'm one of the new pediatric cardiologists. Um, I came from Minnesota where um, I trained um, for my fellowship. I have a spe special interest in... Um, cardiac imaging, specifically cardiac MRI, um, and cardiac genetics. So my goals, I mean my immediate and I guess I would say long-term goals, um, are to develop the pediatric cardiac MRI program and also um, to start a cardiac genetics clinic awesome. together with the genetics team here. Fabulous. Great to have you here. Exciting. I'm Josh Weir, one of the new radiation oncologists, um, focus in gynecologic malignancies as well as thoracic, and I just got saved by a page. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Midhan. Uh, I'm originally from India, um, and I did my fellowship training in Oklahoma where Josh also did his training, trying to fill him in as well. Um, so I'm fresh out of fellowship, starting uh, new, as a new faculty here in GI Oncology. So excited to be here. And with the help of Dr. Dabul, we'd like to develop the GI Oncology program here by getting more trials, um, both investigated, initiated, and uh, national trials, and help the population of uh, West Virginia as much as we can. And also other goal I'm um, looking forward to is work with students, residents, and fellows as much as I can. and and help in uh, teaching and uh, develop the next generation of doctors. Awesome. Hello, I'm Sam Merrill. Um, coming here from Hopkins, where I was faculty in benign hematology. So I'm excited to practice with a bunch of solid tumor oncologists, because uh, nothing makes them more uh, uncomfortable than things in the blood that aren't cancer. So <laughs> on over to me. Um, originally from Arizona, rural Arizona, so I'm excited to focus primarily on delivering health care to patients and helping cut down on some of that weight crime right. issue. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sonic Preetholak. Uh, I'm coming from Mayo Clinic Jacksonville. 
I'm recruited as a translational neuro-oncologist with lab-based and clinical-based practice. So one of my uh, goal is to, um, to help the patients with aggressive brain cancers with um, bed, bench side to um, bedside clinical trials coming from my lab and then collaborating with other institutions in the country. Um, we've already uh, some ball rolling there and then with the help of other oncologists who are all recruited here and uh, prior ones uh, help the residency program and uh, build the next generation of physician scientists. Um, so thank you. Thank oh, you. Fabulous. Thank you. Hello, my name is Noor Dabul. I'm originally from Syria. And I started actually in Houston because of the warm weather, ended up in Michigan, Pennsylvania. Just finished my fellowship for oncology in, at Allegheny, Pittsburgh. And I shared Dr. Mella goals with the GI oncology here, both for research as well as clinical goals. And I want to welcome everyone so friendly. Thank oh, you. thank you. Thank you. So good to have you here. Hello, uh, my name is Michelle Witt. I'm originally from Wilmington, Delaware, um, but I've been living in Morgantown for the last couple of years and found it very welcoming. I'll be working in the microbiology, immunology, and cell biology department with the IMMB program, an undergraduate program focused on immunology and medical microbiology, so kids can get that hands-on experience to see if they like it or not, and critical thinking skills. I'm Excellent. glad to be here. Great, thank you. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Peng Wang. Uh, I previously studied at the uh, University of Wisconsin um, Medicine. Uh, I joined the Department of Radiology uh, as an MRI physicist, and uh, I'm taking part in the uh, MR guided focused ultrasound treatment uh, with the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. It's an exciting program. Hi, my name is Amir Kamran. Uh, I'm a new faculty at the Medical Oncology and uh, Hematology Department. Uh, I'm coming from uh, Pittsburgh, like Dr. Dabul, and I'll be uh, primarily developing the genital urinary oncology program and working on clinical trials for our patients. Fabulous. Thank you. Hello, uh, Dinesh Kannabiran, uh, joining the section of nephrology medicine. Uh, originally from Madras, India, but I did my fellowship in Cornell, New York, New York. also trained at MUSC Transplant Fellowship, uh, was leading the program at uh, Peoria, Illinois, and now WE wants to start a heart transplant and a kidney transplant, and I'm going to help them build from scratch and grow the transplant program. Oh, great. Great to have you here. Hi, so my name is Zach Weil. I am a uh, I was on the faculty at Ohio State for about 10 years. I'm a neuroscientist in the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute in the Department of Neuroscience. And uh, we study traumatic brain injuries with the long-term goal of uh, improving, improving outcomes, especially for children with a history of TBIs. Great. You see, I'm happy here as well. James Walton. I'm with Zach also in the Department of Neuroscience. Um, I'm originally from Maine, did my training in Ohio State, and postdoc in Atlanta, Georgia State University, and I studied biological rhythms. And uh, my short-term goals are to get a lab established and then uh, perhaps do some good science and train some scientists. Awesome. Good to have you here. Hello. I'm Ben. I'm from Moundsville, West Virginia. Um, I was an ER nurse for nine years, and now I'm faculty at the School of Nursing, and my main interests are emergency health, emergency nursing, and critical care. Awesome. Thank you. Good to have you here. Um, hi, guys. My name is Beth Stiles. I'm actually from Point Mary in Pennsylvania, which, if you guys aren't locals, that's the cheapest place to live in Morgantown, okay? So if you're new and you need a place to live, come <clears throat> come to Point Mary, and we're closer to the lake than Cheat Lake is, okay? <laughs> I, I should be mayor. I should be, but... I also am um, nursing faculty. I'm an emergency room nurse as well, uh, forever until I die, I'm sure. But um, some things that are that really are important to me, and I'm going to focus clinically and research on, is um, there's this general sense of um, um, nursing burnout, nursing unhappiness, very short into nurses' career. So I'm going to help prepare my students as well as try and figure out what's causing those behaviors and what's causing that cultural um, 
kind of, um, you know, just unhappiness, just whatever. So that's it. Thank you. Right. The very, uh, that's a great area to focus on. Hi, my name is Sarah Kennedy. I'm a new part-time clinical instructor for the School of Nursing as well. Um, I work at Mon General in, as a clinical or a critical care nurse float. And my goals are to start with the sophomore students and get them a strong foundation to provide holistic care. Yeah, awesome. Uh, hi, my name is Juan Bugeno. Originally, I'm from Chile. I've been in the country since 2000, uh, working and training. Uh, recently, I graduated from the oral medicine program and geriatric fellowship at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I work as a faculty at the University of Tennessee in Memphis. And some of my goals here are, of course, to participate in the development of uh, future oral healthcare providers and get a well-established uh, relationship especially with the oncologists, to participate in the cancer patient care. Great. Thank you. Great to have you here. Hello. My name is Sam Dorn. And as I look around, I think I'm the old man in the room. Ah. Um, Only as old I, as you feel. I feel young. Ah. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I retired from uh, University of Texas at Houston, where I was chair and program director and before that at Nova Southeastern University in Florida, where I was chair there. Um, and I decided I had enough of the warm weather. So Tom Borgia, who's the dean at the School of Dentistry, um, invited me to come up here. And I asked him about the snow. And he said, we just have sweeping snow. You just take a yeah, broom. Yeah. So I came in January when I think you had the worst snowstorm you ever had. And we finally flew into the airport. And I was given the keys to the rental car, and they said, it's out there in the parking lot. And all I saw was white. I didn't see any cars. You didn't say how big the broom was that you had to sweep. Yeah. <laughs> and it had this steel plate at the end of the broom, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, my goal, as far as the uh, department goes, is to make it world-renowned and also to get our alumni to be very proud of what they have. And um, I, I think we're, we're going to do it. We're well on our way. We're changing a lot of things. And um, I'm just looking forward to meeting a lot of you. I saw there were some people here from Houston. So uh, you'll share my shivering during the winter. This makes for a nice, cozy environment for everybody to come together. Hello, I'm Mike Frame. I am the new assistant program director for the nursing anesthesia program that we're starting at WVU. I'm very excited about this. Um, I have been a CRNA for a long time. I'm coming to you guys from the other university in the state um, in Marshall. So I've moved up in the state to WVU, which I'm happy about. Or yellow and blue make green. Right. That's right. That's right. Um, my goal is to get the program up and running. Um, in West Virginia, 50% of the workforce, the CRNA workforce, is set to retire in the next decade. So we really need to try to help meet the needs of the state for nursing anesthesia and all the, all the departments that we touch. Great. Good morning. My name is Gina Graziani. I'm the chair of pediatric dentistry with the School of Dentistry. Um, I did my training here. I'm from West Virginia. I did my dental degree here and then hopped across the country to UCSF to do my training. And then I moved to Colorado to practice in the mountains. And surprisingly enough, while I was there for the past three years, you guys did have more snow than where I lived in the Rocky Mountains uh -huh. where there were avalanches and the interstate was closed. Couldn't believe it. So I look forward to a little bit more snow this winter. I'm excited. Uh -huh. um, so for goals, if you don't know, we don't have very many pediatric dentists here in the state, and we got a whole lot of need. I'm sure that's a, a theme that we all know. So I really look forward to, one, working with our dental students to see um, if they can help provide even non-invasive techniques to kids throughout the state when that's applicable. Um, I look forward to treating medically compromised kids, healthy kids, happy kids, sad kids, sleeping kids, screaming kids. I will, I will take anything. 
I hope to infiltrate the hospital like a little virus and <laughs> get on all of your teams for hemonc, for cardiac, for um, transplant surgeries. I need to be there with you with all of these kiddos, making sure they have dental clearance. Um, we just want to give them the best that they have. Additionally, we're going to start a residency. All of the hospital people who come for some pedo help are like, send somebody from your team. And I'm like, I don't got a team. Like, I got me. So we'll start a residency. There's so many things to do. Um, please, if you have any interest in pediatric dentistry, uh, come find me. I have a few cards. I should have brought a lot, and I should have just handed them out to all of you. Um, but I'm here to help for anything you guys need. We have so much potential here um, at WVU as I mean, look at all your faces and all of your background. We're so fortunate to all be here and together. Um, and then the School of Dentistry has so many awesome things happening. So we will have more pediatric dentists here in the state soon. Okay. Oh, so happy to have you here. I love your enthusiasm. Whoa. Uh, my name is Kishin Wang. I'm a, I'm a biostatistical faculty at the School of Nursing. Uh, originally, I'm uh, from China. I earned my PhD at Göttingen University uh, in Germany. So later, I moved to Canada. I uh, uh, finished my postdoctoral fellow at Hospital for Sick Children uh, in Toronto, Canada. Um, before uh, joining WVU, uh, I had worked for uh, 10 years at East Tennessee State University uh, in the College of Public Health. <laughs> so uh, at WVU, uh, I will teach uh, biostatistics courses at the School of Nursing. Uh, so I have background in biostatistics, and genetic epidemiology, and uh, statistical genetics. Uh, so uh, if you want to do some collaboration, uh, with your data analysis, yeah, you're welcome to uh, contact me. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more table. Louise. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Louise Veselicki, and I am the Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs for the Health Science Center. I work very closely with Clay. And my position involves working with faculty. And so that would involve our goal of keeping the smile on your faces that you have today in one year, in five years, and 10 years. And so my door is always open. If you ever have challenges or things that you want to do, please let me know. We also deal with faculty development. And we're trying to give you opportunities to grow. So you will have that within your schools and in your departments, but certainly in our area as well. I work very closely with the provost in promotion and tenure season. And so we have a new member of the provost team that you'll get to meet this morning. And we, we will help you with that, with understanding all the protocol for your schools. I also want to mention that you're here at a really exciting academic health center. I had to learn that an academic health center is actually defined as a as a area that has at least a medical school plus one other school. And those of you that are from the other schools, we're really glad that you're part of our whole operation. The med school has an MD program, all of the programs that you're from, and then you could hear many that spoke today, HIIN, the new physician assistant program, in athletic training, that's where I saw you from. <laughs> Welcome. And, and so we're really glad we have a whole group of people here. My other hat is that I do student affairs. And so I work with all the professional programs in terms of the accreditation standards. We have a robust interprofessional education program where we're all getting people to work together as teams to be more efficient in our healthcare outcomes. Those of you who have just started here, one of the places I'd like you to visit on our campus is our STEP Center, which is our simulation center. And we have that open, and we utilize it so much for all of our different programs. So we have a lot going on. I'm so happy that you're here. And please know that I'm located in the vice president's office, and the door is always open. 
I have two main people that work with me, Lena Maynor, who's not here today. She does a lot of the student affairs issues, and that's mind-boggling with policies and academic integrity and et cetera. So is promotion and tenure, too. But again, we try to work all that out. So again, welcome. And Gina was one of my students, and I loved hearing you, Gina. You sound wonderful, <laughs> <laughs> uh, along with everyone else. OK. Thank you. Julie? Hi, everyone. I'm Julie Lockman. I'm the second person that works with Louise, um, primarily on faculty affairs at the Health Sciences Center, um, where I'm, I'm director of faculty affairs for that. Um, I have a couple of other roles. Um, I'm also the director of all of our professional development programs in the Clinical and Translational Science Institute. So I'd love to connect with you and the others of you who really talked about getting some clinical trials up and going. Um, any of you who are incorporating research um, heavily into your faculty appointment. Um, I'm a basic scientist by training, but I've learned a lot about clinical research. And, and, and really, I spend a lot of time um, helping our clinicians develop that foundation to be successful um, in their research. and. Um, I think that's it. Great. Last but not least. Good morning, everyone. I'm Presha Niedermeyer. I'm joining the Office of the Provost on Monday, so I feel a very kindred spirit among you all or just new to Morgantown. I've been here about 12 years, but I was actually raised in Morgantown and am an alum of WVU. Um, so that's, uh, that's where we are. And you met my colleague earlier, Melissa Latimer, who's going to be doing a lot of the training. And I have been privileged already to, in my former life, to work already with Dr. Marsh, Dr. Veselecki, and Phil Lockman, um, and look forward to continuing that march Clay. in the spring. Okay, Clay, <laughs> Louise, and Julie. Thank you so much. Okay, so this was a fantastic experience for me, and I hope for you guys, it's incredible the talent that we have in the room and the passion for trying to make this the best place possible. And, and I think that although we are in some ways in the same sort of um, frame as many, many other universities, academic medical centers, academic health science centers, the difference is that we don't want to be like everybody else. We want to be really authentic as, as we are. And, and I will just tell you two stories and give you one or two frames, and then I'll entertain any questions. We have a lunch in here at 11.30, so we cannot be late. Um, the, 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 the two frames that I would share with you, one is the starfish story. Have you guys heard this one? It's a really simple kid story. So this, this little boy or little girl, depending on what your perspective is, walking up the beach and sees a whole bunch of starfish that have been washed up on the beach. And, They'll die if they don't get back in the ocean. And so the little child starts throwing them back in one by one. And an older person walks by and laughs at the child and says, you know, you're wasting your time. You'll never get all those starfish back in the ocean. And the child looks back at the older person and said, you may be right, but for the ones that I do, it will make a big difference. And to me, that means that we should always help the person in front of us. We're not here to rescue anybody. We each have our path. We each have our stuff to get through. You know, our life is an adventure, not a destination. And if we have that adventure, that journey with people that we really care about, and we appreciate what we are experiencing, you know, somebody said that a, that a person will go through 80% of their conscious life by eight years old. Because the first year, 100% of your experiences are new, second year, 50%, et cetera. By the time you get to be 36 years old, your new experiences are only 2.6%. But early, you get inculcated with how things are, how things are supposed to be. So you're responding with patterns almost all the time and almost never seeing the incredible opportunities that each one of us have. I'm a critical care guy at the end of our lives, at, when I've been with people. Most everybody wants another meal at home, wants time with somebody they love, listen to music, take a walk, feel the breeze. We have that ability every day, and I bet you very few of you guys really appreciate that. So I think gaining this idea that we have this incredible beauty, that people here, oh my gosh, you guys are so talented and wonderful, and we're so pleased you're here. We get to know each other, enjoy that, hold on to these experiences because it's not about 10 years from now when you get to be a you know, full professor or whatever. It's about enjoying the journey that you're on. Um, Google did a study called the Project Aristotle 
and they wanted to figure out what made their best teams the best, and they measured everything because they're Google, they really found only one thing that separated their best teams from all other teams. Do you guys know what that is? It was a higher degree of psychological safety on their best teams. And if you think about Abraham Maslow, who's uh, kind of the father of you know, modern psychology, or at least one of the, the few leaders, he came up with a hierarchy of human needs. Remember, physiological needs are first. You gotta breathe, your eyes gotta blink, you know, your heart's gotta beat. But the second level of human need is safety, psychological and physical, and then it's love, self-esteem, and self-actualization. And maybe self-actualization is just to be able to look through the eyes of understanding. When you look in the mirror, you're, you're seeing a miracle. And if you can see that in others and see that in what you're doing and see that in your own lives, then you're blessed. Because the average lottery winner is less happy than the average person. Some people say, hey, give me a shot at that. I'll try it, even though maybe it's a risk for me. But the average lottery winner, less happy than the average person. The average person surviving a life-threatening illness, happier than the average person. Brings me to my second frame. My second frame, and this seems really pedestrian, but I think it's really, really powerful, and Louise has heard me say this a bunch, and Julie too, that I think that the most important single thing we can do, if we follow this one frame, I think everything else is secondary, is treat each other and treat yourself like somebody you love. Because if you do that enough, this will be a great place. The rest of it's the details because ultimately strong community, strong family, is just really made out of strong social connections between each other. And if you earn each other's trust and you feel that you're safe, then you can be authentic. And ultimately the greatest expression of a place is authenticity. So therefore we wanna be the best us we can be. And if we're the best us we can be with the kind of talent we have in the room, we're gonna be an amazing place but if we try to be UCSF or Stanford or Harvard or Yale or Hopkins or whatever, and I've been, know many people from most of those places and have been to many of them too, and they are great places, but they have their own path of greatness and we have ours. And I think ours is really going to be to try to get back to our foundation, back to our roots, do what we would want to have done for our children, for our spouse, for our parents not only a place you want to be treated like that, but a place you want to work, a place you want to grow, a place you want to live, create, thrive. If we do that right, everything else is secondary. So it is 1124. We're going to have to finish in just a minute or two. Is there any pressing questions or comments or thoughts or wisdoms? I have two more sayings that I, I'm, I'm a big, like I keep sayings of mine. I love Rumi who's a Sufi poet and many years ago. He said, yesterday I was clever and wanted to change the world. Today I am wise and decided to change myself. And I think that for me, that's what this journey's about. It's about our journey to understand and discover ourselves. And in doing that, I think we understand the world that surrounds us. And by changing the way that we see ourselves and see each other, I think it changes the reality in which we live. And, and if you look at the Adverse Childhood Experience Survey, if you look at Angus, Kate, or Angus uh, Deaton and Case's work on deaths of despair and hopelessness, if you look at Elizabeth Blackburn and Alyssa Pell's work on the role of stress in shortening telomeres, i.e. causing you to age biologically, it's true, I think, that our burden of opioid addiction and disease is really based on dis-ease. Disease, dis-ease. And the way we look at the world with fear and scarcity, which is why the paying you more every time you do something is not good, as opposed to looking through the other lens, which is abundance and gratitude and love. And if we can love ourselves, I think we can love each other. And if we do that right, then we will rediscover the wholeness that is us, and I think that is what will help make this state and make this world a lot better and a lot healthier. So thank you for being here. Thank you for putting up with the sort of introduce each other, but I think it is important just to see the breadth and the depth of the people, the places, the talent, the commitment to come here. And I deeply appreciate that. And like Louise said, we are here to help you. So we're both in the same office suite. My email's online. 
I will distribute. I, I have cards. I have my cell phone because I'm better at texting and, and than I am at email. I get too many emails and I get distracted. But I am happy to help any way I can. So thanks so much for being here. Hope you have a great day. And anything we can do to help you here career-wise, we are here to serve you.